Okay, so even if you go as fast as the Parker Solar Probe, which you can do to visit the sun, but not to go down the solar system, even with all the gravity assists we're talking, at least tens of thousands, probably hundreds and thousands or millions of years, even to get to Proxima Centauri, let alone anywhere else. Yep. Uh, but I know that people are looking at and researching much faster interstellar travel. There's the Breakthrough Starshot project. That's right. Which uh, plans to launch uh, admittedly very small probes about the size of a smartphone or something like that. But they're talking about only a few years, uh, maybe a decade or two to get to yeah, Alpha Centauri. So how can they do that? I mean, we know that using normal rockets, That's right. you can, if you have more fuel, you can get faster. And that's, for example, how the, the, uh, the mission to Pluto yep. got there by just burning a lot of fuel. <laughs> that's right. For a very long time. That's right. Uh, so we can't use gravity assist and we have to essentially... Well, we will use gravity assist. We will, but... They're but... not going to help you that much. That's right. And it we... might get you, you double the speed, but you'd need like a hundred of times the speed to achieve this. And you can get a good speed getting into low Earth orbit. And as we saw with all those cases, your fastest speed usually is right as you're leaving the Earth. So this is where everyone's idea is. Why don't we use the ideal case of everything? What if we did the heavy lifting to put something in low Earth orbit, which we know how to do, we know how to do well, and we can get a pretty good speed as we talked about before. But now what if we had something that was very lightweight, but we were able to accelerate really, 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 really fast beyond anything that we've done. And that's the idea of the Breakthrough Starshot. Yeah, I mean, the normal problem, as we've talked about, with any sort of launching anything into space is that the energy in the fuel is only just enough to lift even the energy of itself into space. That's right. So uh, you can't have a very lightweight rocket if most of it has to have the fuel to power itself. Exactly. So you'd want something that didn't have to carry fuel. That's right. And that's the idea of Breakthrough Starshot again, is that the fuel is on Earth. You're using a laser on Earth to push the object in space. So the object in space can be really lightweight. That's right. So, and this is what we were, we are talking about here. So this is what we talked about also when we were talking about space junk of using lasers to deflect or deorbit uh, space junk. It's the same principle. If you have enough energy from a laser, you can create essentially a force on an object and give it a push. Yeah. And there are long time idea of using sunlight to do this. So you yep. have a solar cell, you have a very, very thin, very large aluminium sheet or something like this. Yep. And the, the radiation from the sunlight can push it outwards. Now, sunlight, I mean, I don't step outside the sun and then get knocked <laughs> over by it. It's not a very high acceleration. That's right. So you're going to need a very big sail to collect enough sunlight. But this has been done. People have launched these. That's things. right. Th there are two solar sails in space that have worked. Um, the Kepler Space Telescope, when it broke, used sunlight from the sun to give it a little bit of a push really far away, just enough to help keep it a bit stable. So we know it works. So now everyone's idea is, what if we took the sun and put it on steroids, let's say? What if we had a giant array of lasers that we could shoot at a very big sail that was very lightweight and give it one super big push? And this is the principle of the Breakthrough Star Shot, is we know how to build, build lasers. We know now how to build lasers that can target something and give it a little push. And we know the sun can do it. So we're kind of, what happens if we put them all together? Now, there's obviously lots of challenge to this. How do you build a very thin sail that is also durable, that won't be destroyed by a bunch of lasers? How do you build a lightweight satellite? Well, as we've explored, we kind of can do that. So there's a lot of different challenges that we think we can do it, but how much energy do we need? So some colleagues of ours here have estimated you need about 100 gigawatts worth of energy to accelerate that. Okay, that's pretty big. <laughs> so uh, the current biggest battery that we can store in it, that's about 100 times bigger than the biggest battery we can build on Earth right now. Hmm, okay. A challenge. So, or you could have about 100 million lasers shooting at the same time. So it's the sort of idea that ooh, maybe the, the principles are there. I think this is the difference when we talk about interstellar travel. All of this can come together to work. And what people are planning on is that over time, you could develop lasers enough so you get enough energy. So maybe in 10 years, the lasers are 100 times more powerful. So you only need a million lasers, but you can only store a lasers. only a million lasers and you can store up some of that energy. So maybe. But the goal is to be able to accelerate this giant sail 
20 to maybe 40 percent the speed of light. So much, much faster than the Solar Parker probe. So that means you're talking 10, 20 years to get to yeah. Proxima Centauri. Still, yeah, 10 times more than that. So, so you're still, you know, you're centuries to get to, uh, to get to any of the, the the good stuff. Yeah. So you're still talking about decades to get to the next planet. Now, if you don't send a human, that's fine. You know, a lot of these ideas are we we can't afford the weight of a human anyways because we're too heavy with all of our needs. So you just essentially yes. This is, these are going to be like a few kilograms. That's right. These are pretty much a satellite with a battery and a camera. That's it. But and we communications because it would be no use <laughs> flying past and not being able to send any message back, and that's a very tricky issue. That's right. So there, that's tricky issue. And then people have even started to calculate. Well, okay, if we're traveling at twenty percent the speed of light. We don't want to go past the planet at 20% the speed of light because... Lincoln, you've missed it. Yeah, <laughs> that's not very good. So we have to slow down. Now, you can't just put on the emergency brake on these things. You have to find a way of slowing it down. And you can't rely on the aliens on this planet firing a laser back to slow it down the other way around. Exactly. So you would actually then have to build up a little bit of propulsion and energy and other means to do it. And so that's actually going to slow down your speed when you get there because you have to slow down as you get there for quite a while. So actually, maybe instead of 20 to 40 years, it's actually going to take closer to 80 to 100 years for the whole mission in order for all this to happen. So it probably will happen some point. I don't know if it's going to happen in the next decade. Maybe it can. Maybe there's a big advancement in batteries and lasers that we haven't thought of, and we've seen this. But we probably won't see it anytime soon, but I imagine it will happen. It just won't be the means for sending people interstellar, just small satellites.